right, well, good morning. Ooh, that's hot. Happy Father's Day to all the men. Come on. Somebody ought to get excited. <laughs> we, uh, it's it's going to be a good day. I've got, I believe, a word that uh, I believe will bless you and uh, stir you, challenge you. And if, and if that's not enough, you know, and you really want to want to get uh, either motivated or intimidated for all you fishermen, just go see Dennis Sartain and look at that fish he caught winning that tournament. Oh, man, he caught a monster. So anyway, but uh, we, are, we are so blessed. You know, I've, I've got, of course, uh, my mom is here and, and uh, so grateful for the unconditional love that she expressed to me. And uh, sometimes it's, it's it, you know, we're going to talk about some fathers here a little bit, you know, this morning and, and uh, look at just overall some things that we can learn from the life of Abraham. But, but um, you know, mamas, I, I, again, I want, to, I want to thank God for those of you that are having to serve, you know, in both roles as well. And I want to honor the women that have uh, uh, that responsibility and are willing and able to step up. How many thank God for strong women that, that are absolutely, you know, so needed. But uh, my mom's childhood friend, Beth, is here from Abilene, and, and uh, what a delight to, to have you as well. So thank God for all of you that are watching online, and we've, we've got some great things in store. You know, this week, we've, we've got our, uh, our Global Ventures team, we've got, a, 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 I believe it's 12, 12 from San Angelo, and, and I don't know if any from Arlington or not, but we've, we've got folks headed to Brazil uh, this week and uh, on the mission field. And so we want to be praying, praying over them, and we'll do that in, in just a moment. I, um, I've, I've got some, you know, some other things that I just want to mention real quick. We, we also are uh, supporting um, Jerry and Jana Lackey you know, with Love Botswana there in Africa. And... Um, and they, they've been kind of pivoting in the ministry for, for some years now. And um, they have actually um, given the church over. And so it's being pastored now for some others. And they're doing some other things. One of the things that they just feel called to do, and it's interesting how God seems to always uh, seemingly connect us with, with others that are in education as well. And uh, Seeds of Hope, you know, that's there in Jericho and, and uh, some of the other ministries that, that, that we support uh, with Core Love in, in Haiti. It's not just an orphanage. It's also about education and uh, doing those private schools. But, but uh, Jerry is very involved. They have embraced him to be uh, very active in public schools there in Botswana, Africa. And so... He, he, he was wanting to build, he had shared it with our team that he was wanting to build uh, at this one particular school a playground. Well, somehow, Jerry, out of, out, again, his, his roots are out of Houston, Texas, where a lot of money's at, lots of philanthropy. He has been donated 40 playgrounds, 40. And so we, we helped get a shipping container to get that first set over there. But now he needs some teams to come help him be able to install. And so we need some construction team members. And so just putting that out there, uh, hey, start saving now. Start planning. We'll, we'll get some of those dates out. Some of you have really enjoyed that type of trip and not just the Global Ventures trip. And we haven't done a lot of the others. But here's another opportunity. And, uh, and if you go, who knows, you might get to do what Scott Nelson did and uh, jump off the highest, what, bridge in the, on the earth, bungee jumping. So anyway, over the Zambezi. So <laughs> that's still remarkable that Scott did that. I don't know if he's here this morning, but man. I looked at it, when I, I've been there, you know, and I've looked at it, and I've gone over and actually stood on the platform to look down, and it was during the, the dry season, and so the river was way over there, and there was all these big boulders down below. I said, no, I'm good. So anyway, <laughs> but, uh, anyway, we, uh, we want to send a team back, and you could, you could be a part of that as well. Uh, we've got Israel trip in October coming up and still got a couple of spots available. Love for you to go with us if you'd like to. Amen. Well, let's pray over our, our team. I, 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 um, 
in worship. Man, I appreciate Hector. Dude, man. Okay, he needs to move from the, from the hosting rotation to the teaching team. I mean, that was so good. Wow. And, and as we were, we were in that worship and that, just, I just sensed that, that um, you know, and, and, and so many times I, I want to move in this way. I don't necessarily call somebody out individually, even though sometimes I could. I, I, I just, but I wanted to put this word out. I feel like that somebody has shown up. Maybe, maybe you're a man and maybe you have felt drug here today, you know, by, by someone that's made you come. And, but, I, but I sense that you were really basically saying, all right, God, here's, here's an opportunity. And, and you're, you're, you have been a skeptic, you have doubted, you have uh, been disappointed. Maybe something, maybe it's church hurt. Maybe it's, I don't, I don't know what kind of hurt that's there. But there is something, and you're here this morning. And you're giving God that opportunity. And uh, I just felt like he said, you watch what I can do if you'll surrender, if you'll really give it over to me. And so I'm just believing for you to do that this morning. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for the word of the Lord and just the ministry and the preaching that will take place that you will cause me to speak as an oracle of God with prophetic utterance and that we'll have hearts to receive all that you have for us. Father, we thank you for this time, not only for this morning, but throughout the next couple of weeks here that we would be praying over the Brazil team and and all the ministry that will be taking place there um, in in Brazil with with Global Ventures and and team members coming from around the world. And Father, we pray for um, just the work that you've called us to, that we would be able to continue to do what what uh, everything that you have for us. Father, uh, we just want to offer ourselves to you and as a, as a church in this community and other communities, Father, that we would continue to uh, be the, the light that shines, to be the salt in the earth, to, to, to be that, that portion and that part that you would have for us in, in each community. And Lord, we thank you for that. Bless our time together and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Well, on this Father's Day, I, you know, just honoring fathers, I, I was thinking about Father Abraham. And, and um, you know, I've, I've preached along these lines in years past, but I, I, again, just sensing, you know, something very, very fresh and just stirring in that. And, um, and so I'm, we're, we're going to read a passage of Scripture here in just a minute, but I want to I throw out some statistics again, just where we're at in society, because I see this... Um, so prevalent, you know, especially with the charter schools. You know, this fall we'll enter into year 15 in our charter school um, history. And so our 15th year that we'll, we'll begin uh, with uh, 4,000 or more students that uh, we'll, we'll have this coming year. And um, just with the things that we, 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 um, we face, you know, the, uh, the challenges sometimes with our kiddos and, and where they're at. You know, they say that Gen Zers worldwide, only 22% um, uh, claim to be Christian or have any kind of committed life to Christ. And so, um, you know, that's, that's, not a, not, that's not a very good percentage, right? And we want to impact that. We want to change that. And uh, so we're, we're uh, it's interesting, right now, education, there's an interesting dynamic that's going on, and I don't want to go into all the details of that, but I, I do feel like that, that, that uh, there is, sometimes when you get desperate enough, you actually turn to God. And somehow, legislators, they passed, listen, they passed a state law now that public schools can hire or, or invite volunteer chaplains, hire chaplains or in, have volunteer chaplains actually part of the public school system now. Wow. <laughs> and so I, I just, um, we don't want to let these opportunities go by. And so uh, our last school board meeting, you know, for, for Texas Leadership Public Schools, we, we actually jumped on board have already already uh, declared that we will embrace that, that we want to do that. Uh, you have a certain amount of time frame to, to do that, and we've already acted on that. And um, so, anyway, I, I think it's, it's the time of where we're at right now. You know, fatherlessness, it, it's still, um, it's, 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 
it's more clear than ever before of the devastations of fatherlessness. And we know that what Malachi talks about, that there's a curse upon the land when, when there's fatherlessness. And, um, you know, a, a, a child that is fatherless, they say, is eight times more likely to go to prison. That's crazy. Eight times more likely. Ten times more likely to do drugs, to become a drug addict. Five times more likely to commit suicide. Those are staggering numbers, and you got real quiet, but sometimes we need to get sober. And we need to recognize the challenge that is before us. And so I pray that, that somehow in the message today, even though I'm going to preach it from a, a broader sense, but from the example that Abraham gave us, because when you look at, at father, fatherly, a fatherly role model and what he did and, and how it talks about that he was a friend of God because he knew how to command his children, there was a connection in that, that, that the fatherhood of God, was, was visible in, and again, Abraham was not perfect. If you read through the story of Abraham, it's like, dude, what were you thinking? You know, that was stupid, you know. Who cares that your wife said that you can sleep with her concubine? That was a dumb move, you know. <laughs> and later she blames him. You did this. He's like, what, me? <laughs> no. I mean, you know, he, he did some bonehead stuff. He was not perfect by any means, but he still overall, if, you, if we look at predominantly, his, the example of his life was an act of faith. And so I want to talk to you about what, is it, what does it mean to live a life and have a life that um, is, an, is a life of faith. In Romans chapter 5, and we really see that in these passages right here in, in Romans, that it's very, very strong connecting Abraham, our covenant, and how Abraham exercised his belief and was accounted to him as righteous in righteousness, even before circumcision, uh, before, uh, you know, Jesus shows up as the Lamb of God that, that uh, is our blood sacrifice. You, you see that, that so much of that was already happening because of faith, his believing. That's what it is. It is, it is the same word, really. And here in Romans chapter 5, um, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God, not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance or the struggle. May have been a better translation. Uh, the struggle produces, it produces something. Perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. Amen. When you think about Abraham, because that's really what this is in context, it's referring and talking about Abraham and then brings it over into the Christian life that we now have in Christ through our believing. Believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ translate us from darkness to light, from, from where we were. Listen, I still believe in a heaven and a hell. There's a heaven to gain, there's a hell to shun. And if, and if you want to make sure that you don't go there, just hanging around out here in West Texas this next week, it's supposed to be record-breaking temperatures. Believe me, you won't want to go there. If you think it's hot. <laughs> All right, come on, lighten up a little bit. We just... In this, there, there, is, there is this, this 
place that Abraham should have in our lives of acts of faith when you look at his life. From the very beginning, there in Genesis chapter 12, with the divine call that came to him, and his willingness to just pack it all up, to leave his family, to, to move, to go to the place that God had for him, to, to be able to, um, to make covenant with God, to, to enter in, you know, and to have those sacrificial you know, uh, animals that were there and allow God to seal the covenant. He knew that Abraham, he, listen, just like with us, God knew that Abraham couldn't do his part. Abraham could not uphold his end. Just like we couldn't uphold our end of the covenant, that's why he sent Jesus, the perfect man, to uphold the covenant so that now through Jesus we're able to enter into the covenant. Listen, you don't have an individual covenant with God. Abraham was in a place. It says that God had to put him to sleep. Okay, just get out of the way. I'll do this. And it says that God walked in the midst of those sacrifice animals that were there. Visibly, the fire of God walked in that place to seal the covenant between he and Abraham. God did that for us, even through Jesus. With, with us unable to fulfill our side of it. God says, get out of the way. I'll take care of this. And now you, do, you enter in by believing. And so he, 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 he did the covenant. Abraham paid tithes to God by faith. Oh, yeah. Into Mil Melchizedek. You, you read there how in, in, in the, way, the way Abraham lived his life early on as one that would bring the tithe to God. You see that talked about in Hebrews, that it marked an a element of Abraham's life of faith, that he was willing to say, what I have is, is, is because of God's blessing. It's not my own. And to be able to take a portion and give that back to him in, in, in tithes. It's significant. I had somebody this morning that, that just came in, and uh, had come into some money and, and brought a significant check and wanted me to just pray over it. And, and just believe in God as they brought that. It was sacrificial. It was, an, it was that, that act of faith, though, just like Abraham had. That says, God, I'll trust you. It's not about the money. It's not about the stuff. It's our trust is in him. And you're able to bring that and offer that back. Circumcision was an act of faith. Now, come on. You guys know what that is. For Abraham to do that to himself, believe me, he, there better be some faith. <laughs> Think about it a minute. It's like, Lord have mercy. <laughs> okay. If you don't know what all that is, you'll Google that. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you don't want to Google that. <laughs> But it was, it, was a, it was another act of faith in, in Abraham's relationship with God. Producing a son. Some of you are like, producing a son? What are you talking about? At 100 years old, that took an act of faith. I mean, if you look at the story and, and, and listen to the, to the dialogue between Abraham and God, you know, and Abram and God at that time, you know, he's like, he's like you want me to do what? <laughs> Uh, did you forget I'm a hundred? Like, <laughs> by faith. <laughs> Come on, by faith. And then his willingness to sacrifice his promised son to God. Wow. To give it all. I mean, look at how much he had believed for that, that, that boy, that son for his offspring to inherit because he was looking at his servant. You know, he had Ishmael, but God was like, no, through Sarah, there is going to come a promise. And that promise came, he received it, and then there was that word of, okay, have you taken your eyes off of me? Is it just about the promise? Is it just about the stuff? Or is it really about me? And Abraham passed the test by an act of faith. God blessed him. Showed him that his, his, 
His offspring was going to be like the sands of the seashore. His offspring would be like the stars of heaven. Multiplied. And I believe Ishmael was a part of that. If you go on and you really read that. But that promise was coming down through Isaac, Jacob, and on down through the children of Israel. And in that, we find that it comes down to Jesus in the lineage. But now, it's so that all humanity, everyone, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor free, female, but all one in Christ, the Bible says. That's the love of God. And what he did for us. So how do we, how do we look at this? How, how do we truly learn from that on those acts of faith? Well, I believe it was. Number one, it was about a promise. It was about the word of God. Abraham was willing to look to God and what God said. Now, he didn't have the written word, per se, but we have the written word. How much more? So he took God at his word. He said, God, you said this. It's settled. He took God at his word. When you think about even the land that he showed Abraham, and, and that region over there is so, um, it's, you know, there's constantly something going on. The, the, the battles, the challenge, the things that, that we're facing, and... Um, you know, and it just seems to be a constant problem with that. And we have real extremism that's over there. <laughs> the challenges that will continue. You know, Turkey just announced that they, they, they have been a secular society, secular government, and they have shifted now. It's now a dictatorship. It is about Muslim and Islam and being able to dominate society. And it's, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get challenging, even more so. With now Turkey shifting and tipping and going that direction. I believe that the stage is being set for the end times and for Jesus' return. You see it more and more. And just society in general, the the depravity of morality and the lack of standards, the lack of, of just adhering to truth. And so many, even that claim to be Christ followers, are shifting and changing the meaning of the Word of God and attempting to tear it down to somehow diminish the Word of God in so much of what God has said. I believe the, the true church and Christ followers of Jesus Christ need to stand up. Do we still love all? Yes, we love all. But we should never, ever allow that to take our voice from speaking truth in love. And so much of it has. You get labeled. You get canceled. <laughs> Ooh. Well, cancel me. I don't care. Bless God. <laughs> you know, if we, can't, if we can't share what we believe to be true, you know, it's interesting that, that there was this whole push, you know, years ago for tolerance, tolerance, tolerance. And, you know, and as the church of Jesus Christ, man, we have an open door. We'll love everybody that comes in. But there are still moral standards and there's still a belief system that we have and in that, there, there are things that we believe are absolutes that are written in Scripture, that we have scriptural precedence for. And there's morality in that. But that whole tolerance thing has now shifted to where if we disagree at all, now we're the enemy. They want to shame us. They want to drive us out. They want to, you know... You know, it's crazy with what's going on, even in the United States, where it's supposed to be freedom, a religion. But listen, don't let that kid you. I, we, we do a lot in India, 
India, in their constitution, it says freedom of religion. Well, you have freedom of religion in India to practice your own faith within closed doors, but don't dare convert anybody or it could cost you your life. That's not real freedom. And you know what? If, if, if we or any of those opposing have supposed truth, why can't there be a true dialogue? Why can't we have a voice? They're, they want to silence us because they're afraid of the truth. Okay, didn't plan to get off on that, but bless God, there you go. Somebody's got to speak up. We got to take God at his word. The second thing about Abraham, not only did he take God at his word and he didn't compromise, but it, he was also obedient. If we're going to talk about acts of faith, it comes down to a place of being obedient. It's interesting how somehow in this current age, there is this willingness to say, hey, Grace overrides everything, even disobedience. No, that's not biblical truth. Grace is not an excuse to not obey God. Grace is an empowerment to, in, to cause us to be what we cannot be on our own and be able to do what we could not do on our own. Why? Because the grace of God is an empowerment so we can rise above the life of sin. You can't throw out grace. You can't somehow make grace an excuse. Jude speaks so clearly to this and says that those who profess grace and live a life of licentiousness, they're heresy. It's they're heretics. You can't allow that. We can't allow that. You have to let your light shine. How do you let your light shine? Be obedient to God. Be obedient to his word. Live a life of righteousness. Live a life with a holy standard so that you don't compromise your faith. You don't compromise your beliefs. You don't compromise, compromise your morals so that somehow when they look at your life, they can see that there is a difference and because of that, the blessings of God come upon us. Listen, out of that life of obedience, a, an act of faith that Abraham had in living obedient to God, he was blessed. And that's what the Bible teaches, that when we get into that place and we start living in that kind of way, it's on the pathway of blessing, following God, and living a life of obedience. And it says that the blessings of God will chase us down and overtake us. I don't know about you, but I could use some of more of that. And it, listen, it's not just material things. When you talk about the blessings of God, man, I'm telling what. It, th there is nothing that can replace love, joy, peace, righteousness that comes from the Spirit of God, from what He gives us. And to be able to live in that place of peace. There is something special in that. We had some guests this week with us. And uh, Joanne and I coming back, you know, we've, we've nearly been in our house a, a, about 10 months, I guess. And, and, uh, and it's, you know, it's about 20 minutes out and we're, we've got five acres out there. Hey, I, I did my, uh, off the subject, I did my doctor's uh, whole blood work, you know, my annual and everything. And my doctor's like, man, your bad, blood, your bad cholesterol dropped 15 points. Your blood work's near perfect. He's like, I don't know what you're doing, but keep doing it. I was like, yeah, I bought five acres. I'm working my butt off. <laughs> but they were, out, they were out at the house, and it's just out away from town and everything. And it's just, you know, the back patio, and it's just peaceful. And he was sitting out there, and he was like, wow, this is what I'm looking for. They just left Washington State. He packed his ARs, and he headed to Texas. <laughs> He's retired Special Forces 33 years. So anyway, he ain't giving up his ARs. 
<laughs> but Washington, they going crazy out there, man. I'm like nuts. <laughs> He was so happy to be able to, he, he, he got his Texas tags and then wanted to go shoot his guns. Took his Washington State tags to set them up and screwed them to the target. <laughs> like I got, I got somewhere to send these. <laughs> he was on a mission. I, I was like, I don't know where to buy something. You know, when you live here, you don't think about these things. It's like, I need a Texas sticker to put on my truck. <laughs> like, what do you get this Texas? Anyway, it's like Amazon. <laughs> but obedience, it'll bring so many blessings into your life. And the last one right here is perseverance. In that passage of Scripture, I read that in Romans. And sometimes we want to we wanna definitely eliminate that. It's like, okay, God, I'm believing. Can't this be easy? How many of you had a promise? And it's like, okay, God, when? Abraham went years and years before seeing the fulfillment of that promise. But he didn't waver. Romans says that he had unwavering faith. There was an act of faith in his perseverance that, listen, what is that? You don't quit. You just don't throw in the towel. So many today, it's like they don't see the results instantaneous. And they just throw in the towel. It's like, didn't happen. Oh, well. It's like, don't give up. Something can happen if you stay with it. Stay in the fight. It's a good fight of faith, Timothy. You know, what Paul wrote to Timothy. Why is it a good fight? Because it's a fight, but it's a good fight because we win. You just can't quit. Paul wrote to the, in, the, in the book of Galatians that we will reap in due season if we don't faint. You don't quit. You don't stop. You know what? I, I've just seen this in relationships in general, whether, whether they're in marriages, whether they're with kids, or, or even in church life, or sometimes even your coworkers. Listen, just hang in there. It's, it's amazing how sometimes seasons can come and seasons can go. And you can, you can turn that, and, but you can't quit. Too many quit too soon, and they fail to see the blessings of God, of what's on the other side of that, if you're willing to persevere and break through that thing. Don't have secondary storms. Don't mess something up and do something stupid. Just trust God and stay the course. Keep praying. Keep thanking God. Keep doing what you're doing. And on the other side of that thing, I'm telling you, breakthrough happens. I know what that's like. And ultimately, what we'll see is, I believe, a legacy like Abraham had. I think there's something in the hearts, especially fathers. There's something in us that, that we would want to see legacy. I get around guys and I hear them talk about it. And it's about what, what happens and whether, whether, it, whether we're, you know, married or single, even men or women. I think there's, for legacy, it, we've got to think in terms of the next generations. That's why when, when, I, when I look at these opportunities, when I look at what we do in education, when I look at, at you know, our kids just got back from kids camp and just, whoo, thank you all the workers and those who went and volunteered and served all your little angels. Oh, yeah, you, you better thank them. <laughs> and they were at camp this, this past week and just, the investment that we're continuing to make in what we do to make a difference because ultimately that's, that's really what it's about that we could live our lives for the next generations to pass that on for opportunities to be able to do that and 
I pray that you'll, you'll consider that today and think about even for your own life. You know, I was visiting with, with uh, someone out in the, in the foyer earlier this morning, you know, and, and uh, I was, it was almost like I was, we were having a conversation around the message that I had for today, and I said, hey, I don't want you to think I'm pre- preaching at you this morning. I'm, I'm going to be talking about that. He said, oh, no, no. He said, I'm, I'm upstairs in children's ministry. I said, thank you. Thank you. The investment that each one of you can make in some area for next generation to support that in some area with your gifting. Maybe maybe, uh, you know that your gift is not spending time back there with the babies. It's like, no. I'll give in the offering. (laughs) Help bless somebody back there. And that's okay. But are we doing our part? Are we thinking in terms of being generational? I thank God to to be a part of a church that thinks generational. That already, you know, we we had we had one of our staff members, you know, that that uh, I, I, I'm trying to think. I don't think they're 30 yet, but but I, I think they're like 28, but they're like our oldest staff member member and we were like Dang, we got to reach back. We got to find somebody younger. It's like younger generations. We don't want to all grow old together. Right? We've got to keep reaching back. Keep reaching back. Be able to see this multiply. And see more. That, that, that Gen Z statistic, that, that data just, oh. And for me, it just says sick them. <laughs> it, it's not a discouragement. 22% of Gen Zers have a committed life to Christ. That's a whole lot of room to reach a lot more. See, I, I, honestly, I, I don't think that we have enough churches, especially not in Texas. If you read current data on what's going on, especially in that triangle, you know, from DFW down to Austin, San Antonio, over to over to Houston and back up. 21 million in that triangle now and growing. The amount of corporations coming, the amount of people moving here. I mean, it is it is it is historical of what's happening in Texas. There's there I'm sure there's not enough education, education facilities, medical doctors, medical facilities um, for health care but also churches. We've, we've got to look at how do, we, how do we multiply? How do we reach more people? We're all going to be different. We're not the only game in town. There's a lot of other good churches. But each of us have a different little bit of different niche and a little diversity. And who makes us up is different. I like who we are. I was looking at the platform this morning. It's like, man, we are a diverse group. I just love that. Especially when I see those Latinos. I like a I like a salsa. Man, what they got going on Sunday mornings, man, out there, those burritos, man. And all that money goes to missions. It's like, yeah. I'm glad I got a brave son-in-law that married into the family. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Lopez. I got a comadre and a compadre and come on. <laughs> Some of you don't know what I'm talking about, but anyway, it's good. We're just blessed and to see what God's doing here and the spirit of unity and just the things that are happening for us to be able to carry that forward. Mm. I had Pastor Aaron from Jira House call me, and we were we were talking and and. Uh, they have the women's home and just some things there, some needs and, and all. And, and uh, <laughs> you know, when you need ACs in June, July, you need, you need help now. <laughs> and uh, and uh, so we, he had called and we were talking and, and uh, he had heard about Abilene. And uh, just, again, Hispanic pastor, and he's 
talking about Abilene. He's like, I hope you got some Hispanics on that team. I'm like, well, I don't know that we fully got that yet, but I, I'm going to put the word out. Pastor Aaron said, come on. <laughs> we need some others <laughs> that's going to sign up. Abilene's coming this fall. Abilene, September. This September. Yeah, we're launching. Amen. Already got interest meeting, already got some coming. Lots of conversations going on. God's using you, the Life Church. It's awesome. Let's be a part of this legacy. A legacy of faith. Living outside of ourselves. Living for next generations, those who are coming behind us. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to enter into worship. Some of you, maybe this message at some point in it just hit. I know how the Holy Spirit does that. Maybe you're at a place and you're like, man, Pastor, I just haven't been obedient to some things that I just know that God's put in my heart. Just purpose to step out in that, whatever that is. Maybe it is perseverance. You know that God spoke to you today and you were about ready to throw in the towel in this message today. You just know that you know God's saying, don't quit. Stay the course. Get your breakthrough. Inherit your promise. Let God manifest himself and show himself strong on your back.